Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are going to talk about brachistochrone trajectories. Now, you've probably heard that word elsewhere if you watch YouTube. It refers to the path between two points which takes the minimum time. Now, in Kerbal Space Program, a lot of the time we're actually concerned about conserving delta V. We want to use the minimum amount of delta V to get from A to B, and that requires waiting for the correct window, and then performing a series of very carefully timed burns to conserve the very limited fuel. But in science fiction like The Expanse, the spacecraft are essentially what we call torch ships. They use nuclear fusion drive systems that are able to just keep burning constantly and producing many Gs of acceleration for days on end. And while there are mods that provide these fictional drive systems in Kerbal Space Program, you can get the same effect by essentially going into the uh, debug menu using Alt and F12 and then enabling infinite propellant. And here is a spacecraft doing just that. We have a command pod, we have a mainsail engine, and of course we have some radiators to stop the whole thing exploding with excessive heat. This is able to manage just shy of 20G acceleration continuously. And for this journey, I have set Eve as my target and I instructed the spacecraft to point towards it. At this point, Eve is about five and a half million kilometers away and we're gonna cover the distance in about three hours. Now we can use the magic of physics and graphs to figure out how long this takes. This graph shows that with constant acceleration, our speed increases and the area under the curve actually corresponds to the distance travel. And the area under a triangle is simple, it's the base times the height divided by two. Well, the height is equal to the acceleration times the time, which means your distance is a half times the acceleration times the time squared. And of course, you can invert that whole thing to find out that the time to get to the target with a constant acceleration is the square root of the distance times two divided by the acceleration. Now, this of course gets us to the target. By the time we reach the target, however, we are going very fast and we are too late to slow down. So the classic sci-fi Brachista Crone trajectory involves accelerating only half of the distance and then decelerating for the second half of the distance. Now again, the eagle-eyed will spot that this is just a triangle and we can figure out the area of a triangle in the same way. The difference is that the peak velocity occurs halfway through, so uh, we have an extra half factor into our distance calculation. And therefore, we also have an extra factor of a half in the, the time calculation too. However, Kerbal Space Program by default doesn't really give you good distances to targets like this. What we do, however, have is an estimate of the time before we reach closest approach to Eve. And the good news is that if you are making this burn, you can actually use the time to figure out when you should start decelerating. The time to closest approach is assuming constant velocity. So if you draw that onto the uh, graph, you can see that it's like a rectangle. Now we want the area of that rectangle to be the same as the area of the large triangle. And hey, turns out that if you copy the top white half of that rectangle into that bottom side, and they match up when your estimated time of encounter is at twice the time taken to decelerate. Isn't that magic? So the mission elapsed time is how long I've been accelerating for, more or less. I am looking for the moment when my time to closest approach is equal to half of my mission elapsed time. And at that point, I want to flip the whole thing and turn around. At this point, we're going about 970 kilometers per second and of course still picking up a lot of speed here. I should also note that my departure from the atmosphere wasn't quite as fast as I would like because I didn't want to burn up. So we are building in a little bit of extra time to decelerate by doing this exact number here. So there, uh, about 45 seconds, 43, 45, cut. Now flip this thing around, traveling at almost a thousand kilometers per second and burn again. So be sure to note that at these kind of velocities, every second you get that wrong is 1,000 kilometers at the destination. So you'd rather come up 1,000 kilometers short rather than overshoot by 1,000 kilometers because once you realize you're coming up short, you can then reduce the deceleration and uh, more or less arrive at the target. Now you'll know that you're, you're doing it right if the time to the encounter 
decreases at half the rate your clock is ticking up. If it's decreasing faster than that, then you're going to overshoot. If it's decreasing slower than that, then you can actually slow down your thrust and uh, uh, try to come in still as fast as uh, fast as you like, but not quite as fast as if you'd got the thing matching correctly. I mean, this is really one very big, very long suicide burn without the suicide part. You'll also note that for my deceleration burn, I actually picked the retrograde rather than the uh, anti-target position for the simple reason that I noticed that the uh, anti-target was causing my distance of periaps to increase, whereas the retrograde was causing it to decrease for a while. You want to kind of adjust these things a little to make sure that you're keeping your target, you're coming in as close as possible to your target. About two and a half hours into this journey and it's quite easy to see Eve ahead of me. We're approaching it at 200 kilometers per second and when I check the velocity, the time to close approach I see that it is actually running rather slower so I uh, slow down and try to keep my rate of, uh, rate of close encounter still decreasing at a factor of two. Again if you, uh, you could totally cut the engines if you're really bold, if you're really in a rush, but there is a big chance you'll overshoot, and every second at 100 kilometers per second is quite a large difference. We flipped into the sphere of influence of Eve, and at this point, I'm going to be within 11,000 kilometers of the surface, so it actually makes sense for me to now take some manual control and try to bring in my periaps closer to the planet. You can continue to adjust this at any point in the trip. I was obviously just uh, letting this run and barely paying attention to it most of the time, figuring out that I had essentially infinite thrust to correct my trajectory at the last minute. I'm going to also point out that this is an extreme version, right? Normally you would be doing this with perhaps a third of a G if you were in the Expanse universe matching Mars gravity. You can do these kind of trajectories as long as your acceleration is significantly higher than the acceleration due to the Sun. You can't really fly a Brachistochrone trajectory with uh, an ion thruster that generates less thrust than the solar gravity, because then the sun's gravity kind of forces you to go with the flow, as they say. But having very high accelerations lets you just ignore it and go whatever way you like. At this point, I've actually dropped down to less than one third of my uh, thrust. It's just over 5G there, but it should be fine for us getting into orbit here. Uh, there's also another spacecraft on the surface, that's uh, Solomon Epstein's spacecraft, which had a slight technical problem. It only had about 2G acceleration, and it was able to cover the distance in just over one Kerbal day. However, it didn't have enough thrust to safely land on uh, EVE after, it was, uh, after we took account of the atmospheric pressure at the surface ruining the uh, specific impulse. But there we go, beautiful, nice, circular trajectory, flown in ridiculously fast time thanks to the power of sci-fi and or the cheat menu. So I hope that little lesson is useful for those of you who have been asking and interesting for those of you who might already have a clue. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. <laughs>